Dear business partners and friends of Swaco, dear colleagues, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you join us from all over the world. I cordially welcome you live from the Swaco traffic world at our headquarters in Buttons in Austria. My name is Richard Neumann. I'm the head of communication and marketing of the Swaco Group. And it is my pleasure to guide you through the webinar in the next 30 minutes. Thank you for joining our first innovation talk, which is the start of a series of webinars we are going to offer you over the next months. The main purpose is to keep you posted about latest innovations of SWACO in times where we are not able to personally meet at exhibitions, conferences and trade shows. This innovation talk allows you to get in direct touch with us via the chat function in the right hand part of your screen. Please feel free to send us your questions or comments. Following the interview, we will answer your questions in a Q&A session. Today's topic is about an innovative add-on to Swaco's traffic lights. The title of our innovation talk is How Traffic Lights Monitor the Environment. I am happy to welcome for this subject an expert from our traffic signal manufacturer Swaco Futurit, Dr. Klaus Pollhammer. Klaus Pollhammer is a research project manager who looks back at seven years of experience with Swaco. Before joining Swaco Futurit in 2013, Klaus Pollhammer studied electrical engineering and worked as a research assistant at Vienna's Technical University for several years. At Swaco Futurit, he is part of the innovation team that focuses on future technologies and their possible application in the field of signaling and variable message science. The work is done within internal and collaborative development projects, both with external partners from academia and from the industry. Since 2019, he has been the head of the innovation team. Good morning, Klaus. Good morning, Richard. Thanks for being with us today here at our permanent showroom, the Swaco Traffic World in Buttons. Klaus, Swaco Futurit is the world leader in LED traffic signaling and has an innovative track record over many decades when it comes to red, amber, green signalization. I hear there are two new names on the traffic market, Combia and ADEC. What is Combia and what does ADEC stand for? First, I have to say thank you for having me here today. Um, that's, that's very easy. Combia um, is the name of our new signal family. Um, Combia will be the successor of our older signal families and uh, is a modular and, and, and totally new, new designed um, sig signal um, that will, um, success, uh, will be the successor of, of the older ones. Uh, we have, in fact, multiple of our Combia signals here in the traffic world. And, and uh, the modular approach of Combia helps us to, to um, achieve the goal that a signal um, can be more than simply red, amber and green. Um, we, want to, we want to include smart applications or smarter applications into the signals. Um, and one of the, these applications would be AirDeck. AirDeck is a newly uh, developed uh, module for monitoring um, and measuring environmental data. 
Fine. So I see you, you brought a sample of the ADAC unit. Let's move on to this half aspect part of the traffic signal. Which parameters does ADAC detect and measure? Um, our ADAC unit here um, fits perfectly into the, into the housing of a, of a, of a so-called half chamber of Combia. Um, we have multiple sensor modules inside. Um, maybe the, you can see it here. Um, the, the airflow is going in uh, on this side and going out on that side. Um, the data we are measuring at the moment is temperature, pressure, humidity, uh, luminance. There's a rain sensor, that, that's, the, that's the golden one here on top. Um, and we have um, sound. Um, and multiple uh, particles. Uh, that, that's, that's also one 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 thing we, we measure. And we have multiple uh, gas se gas sensors inside. We can measure um, carbon oxide, um, nitrogen dioxide, um, sulfur dioxide, and um, carbon dioxide. Yes, um, and. At this, this data is measured uh, over the course of five minutes, and the average value then is 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 collected. So, so I see we we have a a real multi talent here in 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 measuring many many different parameters. Um, where do the data end up, and how does the transmission work exactly? Um, the data of our AirDeck module is, is um, as I told you, it is, it is measured every five minutes and there will be, there is sent an average over the cellular network. There is a modem inside with a SIM card and uh, the, the, the data is sent to a database of one of our databases and from there it is, it is, it is uh, transmitted either to, to the to the traffic management server of the customer or to a Svaco solution for, for displaying the, the data. Fine. Um, what is the purpose of using traffic lights as environmental sensors? How did this idea come up? Um, there are multiple ideas behind that. One, one is uh, that we want to, to make our traffic signals smarter, more than red, amber, and green. And there are different ways to do it. There are, there are, there are ways for better or other signaling, for example, acoustic signaling or our, our safe light approach to display the red light also as a bar on the, on the, on the pavement. Um, and there is the, the idea that on every crossing there are traffic signals. Therefore, there is the infrastructure there. Um, what can we measure? Uh, that was the idea behind it. And, and, uh, and here we have now the approach that we want to measure environmental data. Um, yeah. That's the more or less, and for and you don't need an you don't need a you don't need a you don't need a specific box there. It is integrated into the signal. It's a, it's it's more for the aesthetics. Yes, that's a, that has always been one of the aspects Swaco has been following that we integrate um, add-ons to traffic signals as smoothly as possible. Yeah, we have, we have shown this with the Alusta acoustic unit, for instance, uh, and ADEC is another example of that. As you, as you said, there is also an acoustic unit for the Combia, which is also based on this half chamber. So therefore, and one, one other aspect here is I have to point out the data is not interfering with the, with the control data of the intersection. It is sent via cellular to the, to a cloud service and therefore the safety is not altered at any moment on through that. That's also. Um, Klaus, what are the benefits for municipalities or cities when they use ADEC? Um, the, fir the first approach is that most mun municipalities 
don't even know how the environmental data is changed. There is the, the, the everybody is talking about pollution and that it is too high, but what is a high value, for example? Therefore, the first step would be to provide data everybody knows, for example, temperature, everybody knows below zero degrees there can be ice for example <laughs> but but the but the but other data for example um, nitrogen dioxide what is a high value what is a low value um, we want to provide this data first to provide a, a decision making basis to say okay we have now we have now this this possibility to 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 measure the data and maybe we can we can have a little less pollution through minimal measurements for example if, if there is just some kind of influence to the traffic management and it's not automatic it can be some kind of human human based approach um, that that would be our base and we hope that our customers find um, lots of applications for this data for example we are providing it we all know that uh, many, many cities and municipalities are uh, willing to know what's happening in their cities in terms of air quality, for instance, and that's a big issue uh, in, in all the climate change discussion and also the impact of traffic on, um, uh, on, the, on the air pollution in general. Um, but what can you tell us um, about the precision of the data you measure? Yeah, that's that's one one thing I have to point out. Um, the unit is quite small, as you can see, and therefore the sensors inside um, are also the, one of the first aspects to choose the sensors was the size, um, and therefore some of the sensors um, do not have the same precision or cannot have the same precision as as professional sensors in this field for, for example, climate or or, or, or pollution um, detection. Uh, so it, it is the, the data we are providing can be a basis for decision making, but there ha that, but if you it cannot be something like it is not exact exact en enough for for example if you if you have a decision making only based on this this kind of data I would not uh, I would not uh, advise uh, make advice for it. Um, there are some of the sensors we are we are very happy with, <laughs> which is, uh, for example, the temperature, the pressure, and the humidity, because that that is something that is that is more or less uh, really really good. And also the pollution uh, sensor, the gas sensors are a little bit tricky. Let's let's say that we we try to make our best and we try to provide our best, but um, we are here in the test fa testing phase. At the I see. Um, so you measure a lot of parameters and data. Can these data be integrated into larger traffic management platforms, um, such as Swaco's MyCity, for instance? Yes, that is our that is our uh, goal, um, and there and we and we want to provide an open interface so that it is not only um, dependent on my city, although we like to <laughs> to 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 uh, to. to integrated there also um, but it is an open it is an open interface and uh, based on open internet standards um, so everybody who has a web server and can receive data should be able to receive the to, the data AirDeck is providing so therefore there there can or should be a solution for everybody who 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 says okay I have my own server or my own management system um, I have a, a I have a receiving point. Um, what data can you provide? So so there is there is the possibility. The first step would be to to provide the data, and the later steps would 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 be to to integrate them into a, a semi-automatic or human-based tra traffic management system. Mm -hmm. I understand. Um, well, you, you brought uh, this sample here, which is a prototype or maybe even more already. At what stage are you in actually bringing AirDeck on the market? This, exactly this prototype we wanted to show on the, at Intertraffic, this and his two brothers or sisters. Um, 
It is, it is um, fully functional. Um, as I said, we are in the testing phase for the, for the sensors, but the data connection and everything else is, is fully functional. Um, we are at the moment in the, in the stage that we are, that we are uh, setting up a, a testing phase, a, a bigger testing phase. At the moment we have single unit tests and uh, something like these prototypes, but now we have some kind of mini series. We want to have in the next half year a, a bigger scale test testing phase. And after this testing phase, we, we hope that uh, AirTech can, can be put into the market, yes. Fine. So interesting news coming from Swaco once again. Klaus Polhammer, thank you very much so far for these clear explanations. Uh, please stay with us for a few more minutes to answer the questions our audience posted via the chat. Dear followers of our first innovation talk, we are now ready for the questions and answers part and would like to address some of the questions you posed via the chat function. Another question from Austria. Is ADEC compatible with international voltage differences? Yes, we tried to. <laughs> That's the short mm -hmm. answer. No, we, 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 we are quite aware that the voltage levels are, are a little bit uh, different from, from country to country or from mm -hmm. region to region. And um, this, but this is our daily, daily work. So we are, we are, we try to provide it um, for, for the different voltage um, levels. Um, yes. So it, it would be compared, uh, it would be possible to, to provide it. Mm -hmm. Another question, um, what is the life of the sensors and do they need to be calibrated? Um, yes, uh, the, so most, most of the sensors need, uh, if, you switch the, if you switch the AirDeck module on, they have some kind of self-calibration in there. So um, it takes, but it's not only for us, but also for competitive, for, for, for other, for products from other companies, you need f a few days to settle the working point of the sensors. They do that themselves and normal, and normal, um, and normally uh, it takes three to four days, then you can get the, then you can get the data. Um, most sensors um, should have, should have there should be no no necessity to. Um, okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, there should be no necessity to 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 change them. The particle sensor itself, there there can be some kind some uh, there can be um, if they are in a in an area with very 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 high pollution, there will be the need to 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 change them after a time. But we, we as we are said, we are in the field testing phase, so therefore um, these are these are the the things we want to find out. Mm -hmm. We seem to have a follower also in India for our innovation Great. talk today. Uh, the question is, as Swako representatives in India, can we start promoting the product or wait for further trials? Um, I, will, I will summarize the, our, our roadmap at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, the product as it is here is, is in a quite far prototype status. Uh, we wanted to present it at the inter-traffic. Um, so, and, and starting with, with, with summer, we want to go into a, a bigger field testing phase um, with, with a couple, with a number of, of modules. Um, and after, and after the summer, we hope that we have enough technical and, and organizational feedback um, to, to settle, settle every, every question we have internally and hopefully also externally. And, Therefore, um, I would I would ask kindly to a little bit to wait a little bit. There will be some kind of um, starting point or in the future, not far in the future. Um, after that, we can we can start really 
the marketing has started with inter-traffic and with, with the innovation mm -hmm. talk, but um, uh, to really provide the product um, in a short amount of time, there mm -hmm. is a little bit work to do. So the actual physical availability of AirDeck um, will be when? What is your guess? Hopefully <coughs> starting next year. Starting next year, yes. early 2021. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we have treated uh, most of the questions we we have here in our chat. Um, I'm I was asked to repeat the first question. Maybe we had some some audio issue in in between, and that's why I wanted to repeat the first question. Uh, the question is: Can ADEC be retrofitted to ah, yes. uh, existing signal heads? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. So so the answer is that uh, the, the half chamber for the smart application, as you see it here, um, is designed for the Combia signal head family. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, if you want to include AirDeck into the signal, mm -hmm. um, you would need a Combia signal. Um, but uh, nevertheless, it, as you see, the box is quite, quite, quite small. You, you could also um, provide AirDeck modules f and, and, and mount them on poles that don't have a Combia signal head on them as standalone solution. It is not the preferred way to do it, but it is possible. Mm -hmm. I see a comment here in the chat. A good innovation as now good traffic management is contribution to public health. So monitoring <laughs> environmental parameters is something which helps cities to uh, to have a, an overview of what's happening pollution-wise in, in the cities and how they can mitigate um, the level of emissions in the end. Mm -hmm. Yes, we, we hope we can provide a little bit of help and, and mm -hmm. support for that. Okay, so dear business partner, partners and friends of SWACO, dear colleagues, thank you very much for joining the premiere of our Innovation Talk series. I cordially thank Mr. Klaus Pollhammer for his availability and his clear insights on another innovative aspect of SWACO traffic lights. I also thank my colleagues Christoph Praxmara and Benjamin Steiner behind the scenes who look after the technical implementation of our webinar. We hope you enjoyed it and got insight, new insights into SWACO's competences and capabilities. The questions we were not able to answer because of time reasons will be answered on our website or just feel free to send us an email to the address innovationtalks at swaco.com. Don't miss our next innovation talk on the 1st of July at 10 a.m. Central European Summertime. The topic will be SWACO X-Line, the intelligent platform for energy efficient intersections. I will then meet our German expert for urban traffic control, Matthias Nolle. For more de details on this innovation talk, please have a look at our website. We look forward to welcoming you again soon. In the meantime, all the best, stay safe and goodbye. Goodbye.